Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us in today's event. And we're all very excited to be here and finding the best people uh, in Israel, abroad, across the globe is always a great challenge. And uh, we're really happy to be here today and share some of uh, our insights and experience. Before we start, uh, I'd like the team to introduce themselves. So, Sigal, please. Hi, so I'm Sigal, and I'm leading the global HR of uh, Kaltura, uh, and I have lots of experience in leading those uh, high-tech companies for many years, and uh, a bit about Kaltura, because it's very relevant also to the topic. So Kaltura is a high-tech company, around 700 employees, uh, spread around more than 20 locations, including the different states in the uh, US, Europe, uh, APAC, etc. And our product is actually a platform for video, video everywhere in the organization. And part of having a conference using video is uh, one of the things that we are, uh, we are doing. And I'll speak about that around recruiting as well. Thank you very much, Sigal Miri. Hi, um, so I'm Miri Kedem. I, uh, I'm the VP HR in eToro. I joined eToro uh, 12 years ago, and I'm leading the HR, uh, obviously, in all aspects, talent acquisition, training, development, and uh, all the rest of, of the uh, aspects of HR. Um, I'm, a bit of it about eToro. Uh, eToro is the leading global uh, investment platform that uh, makes online trading and investing uh, accessible to everyone. We have more than uh, 20 million uh, global users uh, who are using uh, eToro platform uh, and participate in the markets. Um, and uh, we have uh, 1,200 uh, 1, uh, employees around the globe in 11 offices. Thank you, Miriam. Dana? Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Dana. I, um, I come from a company called Logs.io. What Logs.io does basically is a monitor and, uh, and scale system. It's a, these are products for uh, DevOps, for engineers. We have four different products about 250 employees uh, globally across the globe in four main locations. Um, I've been with the company for two years. That's it. Thank you very much, Dana. My name is Guillaume Aguilar. I'm the CEO of CQ Global. CQ Global does uh, targeted search, consultative search, what we call for Israeli companies across the globe. And uh, we'll leave it at that for now and dive right into the questions and, and the things that we think that are important and interesting for today's session. And on that note, uh, Sigal, I'd like to ask you, what do you see as the main success factors in, in hiring talents abroad? Give us, give us your focused view on, on how you see the success factors of, of, uh, of making it happen abroad. Uh, okay, so, so first, I cannot ignore the time, meaning the timing now is uh, all about uh, working everywhere and the buzzwords are all around us in the organization. We are hearing that from our employees as well as candidates uh, uh, that are asking, so where is exactly my office? Uh, is it at home? Did we implement hybrid work? What does it mean, etc.? We have many employees that actually moved from one location to another location. So what does it say about their compensation, their work environment, etc.? And this leads me to think about the success factors. And I think that uh, while in the past we spoke about global and being global and thinking what is the global part of hiring and what is the local, and we hesitate what, does, what is the, uh, uh, the right way to reach. Now we really understand that, uh, that the world uh, decided differently, let's say, and the, the fact that we must be global and the success factor must be that we are uh, really focusing on our culture, 
This is the first thing that I will say, and not necessarily finding the right person in the right location. So first, to not to ignore the importance of the culture and actually more than ever, we are speaking about socialization to a company. What does it mean when you are working so far, never met your manager? We knew that on our, the back of our mind, my colleagues here on the call also leading global companies, but now it's time for the culture to shine and maybe our, or a, our profession to shine. That's the first success factor that I'll say. The second thing is to speak with the management and the employees about the need to be attached a position to location, because sometimes it's absolutely necessary and you need to work locally, but sometimes it's only the old fashioned approach that we had and we need to shake it a bit, not necessarily every time, but this question is one of the success factors that we'll have. And the, the third thing is really to uh, invest in our branding outside the company, because now it's really a, a situation where a person can work one day in one company, the other day in another company. And if he's not attached to the brand, the logo, the people, the culture, as I said, it's very, very hard to consolidate the employees around a, a company, a brand. So this is the third day success factor that I'm seeing. Okay, thank you very much, Sigal. Dana, on that note, I think that we can all say that um, your main customer inside of the of the organization is the hiring manager. So, how do you how do you see uh, our assistance to the hiring managers to make the process a success? Great question. Um, I would probably divide the uh, you know the entire process into three three pieces. So, the first one would be the job description, you know, what are we hiring against? What are the gaps that we're trying to close? That would be the first one. The second one would be the process itself. And then the third one is around the decision making, reference checking and, and all that stuff. So for the first part, I think it's critical. It's, it's pretty crucial with any hiring manager where we're kind of starting the process with to make sure that he's looking at what he's trying to close in terms of the gaps. So I mean, if, if he has a really solid, strong team of four, he's looking for a fifth person, and there's any technical gap, uh, lack of capability at a certain area, this is exactly, it's, it's really critical to start the process knowing exactly what you're trying to hire against, what you're trying to close. And of course, it needs to come, uh, like it, it needs to be part of the job description, right? It's, it's very, it needs to be very clear what we're trying to hire and, and what is a success for us. And then throughout the process, I call it a proficient process when I talk to my hiring manager. So it's, it's basically knowing exactly who does each part. So if we have four interviewers throughout the process, each one of us, this is kind of how we conduct the process. Each one of us know exactly what we are interviewing against. What are the critical capabilities that we are trying to find or to bring across? And, um, and, and that way, when we end up with like two or three great candidates towards the finish line, we know exactly how to compare between the candidates. We know exactly what we were hiring against. So um, each one of us has a role. I think it's very critical when you want to do a proficient process. So none of us are, we're not redundant, right? We're all checking different things throughout, throughout the process. And then towards the end, by the way, in between, I always advise them, they, they keep forgetting. I always tell them, Keep build a relationship, build a relationship. Eventually, when you want to hire someone, especially by the way, abroad. Um, and you know what, Silicon Valley in Boston seems very like they seem big, but at the end of the day, we're talking about small markets. So everybody knows everybody at the end of the day. It's really important to build a relationship to, to just make sure that we are uh, we're really making a good impression on the candidate. Because when we get to a point where we need to make a decision and we want that person other than selling and just making sure he wants you know, to be part of Logs.io, he needs to feel really comfortable with the hiring manager. If he feels comfortable, it will be a smooth, uh, either smooth selling. And as Sigal said, this is, we're working in such a tough market. I mean, the market is just getting tougher and tougher by the day. It just, it's, it's super critical to build those relationships throughout the process and not just towards the end. So I keep reminding them, did you send him a, a text? Did you send him an email? Did you let him know that you're really happy with the, with the last interview? 
Did you check what's going on with them? We need to be two steps ahead of the candidate in that respect. And then towards the end, just make a decision based on a lot of references. As I said, networking is super critical. I mean, I uh, use the board members. I use all of our board members in Boston. I use, you know, friend referrals. I use anyone I can to help, you know, understand what is the perception of this person in the market, especially when we're talking about executive or like higher positions, just to make sure that we know exactly who the, what the person brings to the, to the table. And, um, and then based on that, just make, uh, make the best possible decision based on the gaps. And I always tell them, try to hire somebody who is not similar to you. Try to hire someone, someone who is different. That will close another gap that it, in, ter in terms of what we don't have in the, in the, on the team. And, uh, and of course, diversity, that's, that's, that's critical for us as well. So try to diverse you know, the people. If you have two last, two final candidates, take the one who doesn't, who is not similar to you, but is actually very different than you. Very, very good points. I, on, on the relationship side, I think it's a real challenge uh, in today's remote world. And this is, this is maybe a difference between the local and the global, but building a relationship, you know, one of the, one of the aspects that make people move uh, especially talents is the chemistry between them and the hiring manager, the chemistry between them and the company, the, the, the what they feel is the, is the DNA or the culture. And the, the hiring manager has a huge uh, importance to, important part to play here. And I think uh, building a relationship through this remote world where you don't take anybody to dinner anymore, you don't have a lunch and you don't have coffee in the morning, it's all Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the most important things and a big uh, and a major challenge. So, uh, Emilia, on that note, maybe you can share with us what are the two, three best practices that uh, can improve the decision-making process in the hiring itself. I know that eToro is doing uh, quite a bit of hiring across the globe and in Israel, so I'm sure you have some uh, interesting facts to share with us. Yes. Um, so there are some best practices that are uh, relevant for all hiring processes locally, globally. Uh, but they become uh, super critical when it comes to hiring globally uh, for several reasons. We need to remember that we have less tools to support our decision-making process. We are not familiar with the local market. We are not familiar with the companies uh, that the, com the candidates uh, come from in order to evaluate the added value that they bring. Uh, it's not our native language. It's not our culture. And in general, it's not our comfort zone. Uh, of the Israeli market. So we have less tools in, uh, in our uh, decision-making process. Uh, uh, so when you hire abroad, it's even more important to put some more structure to, to the hiring process um, and, and to go through, uh, like Dana said, uh, uh, to align with the hiring manager uh, uh, on the needs, on the reason for, uh, for, uh, for this hiring. What do we expect from this uh, position? Uh, what do they need to achieve in the first year? In the second year, what will be their KPIs? Uh, how do they need to, who do they need to work with or manage? Uh, what are their dependencies with other departments and colleagues? And when you get the full picture of the ideal candidate, you can start using a scorecard uh, that creates an alignment uh, and structured uh, process to make the right choice. Um, one of the tools that we uh, use a lot in eToro, and it's really working for us and proved to be effective in the decision making, is, is using an assignment as an evaluation uh, tool. Again, this is something that is advised in general in every hiring process, but when it comes to hiring abroad, uh, it's, it's even more important. The assign, assignment enables you to focus on the professional and the per personal skills of the candidate and reduce all the bias of language and uh, culture uh, differences. Sometimes uh, English uh, native speakers present themselves fluently in the interview and we are very impressed by the overall presentation, but it's hard to evaluate the professional and, and personal fit. Uh, so adding to, to what Dana said about the relationship and the chemistry, which is super important, uh, I think it's very important also to use an assignment as a, as a part of your uh, decision-making process so in order to get uh, an objective evaluation tool. Um, another, another aspect is obviously the communication, the interaction with peers, 
uh, uh, from different uh, cultures, which become uh, also very important. Uh, but other than the soft side of the com communication, again, uh, from uh, our experience, it starts with setting expectations about the role in terms of responsibilities and authority. Uh, one of the challenges you face as a, as a global company is around the global local interaction, uh, more autonomy to the local subsidiary versus more control to the headquarter. Uh, so especially when, when the main interaction is with Israeli colleagues and we, we, we are used to how we work and we, we need to be much more open and to provide the, the right tools and uh, the definition of success for uh, the candidate. Uh, so, uh, as part of the process, we make sure to involve the relevant stakeholders and peers in early stage of the job description definition in order to align the future work relations uh, and to uh, avoid misunderstanding or misalignment and also involve them in the interviews in order to ensure a good decision making process. So these are the practices that we use. Thank, thank you very much, Amelia. I think that one of our challenges um, is to is to take the decision making process uh, a bit out of the gut feeling and into the scientific. And uh, and uh, the scorecard you mentioned is something that uh, we've been uh, seeing and using lately, and it gives a new perspective altogether because it's a comparative tool on the one side and it's a focus tool on the other side. And if you build a good scorecard. A strong scorecard based on the on the on the parameters, on the KPIs, on the on the main uh, achievements that you're expecting. Then I think this is a really great tool uh, to help uh, help us uh, in the process itself. So thank you very much, Siga. Let's talk for a moment about one of the one of the more challenging aspects that uh, we deal with in 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 the world of hiring uh, uh, in general and in global hiring uh, even even more so because of the the differences between the cities and the countries. Let's talk for a moment about compensation. How how can you uh, give us a few uh, a few tips and directions? In, in the world of compensation and, and how to look at it uh, without making too many mistakes along the way. Yeah, I'm glad that you said without making too many mistakes because we are making mistakes in this topic. And this topic is, sounds like numbers and very strict, but actually it's a, not a science, it's art. And it's very, very hard to really make this art uh, uh, successful. I think that um, I, I think that I have uh, one major advice around that, and uh, this is uh, actually a bit opposite of what I've said earlier about being glo global. People are still looking at, at compensation in a local way. Okay, so remember the days when uh, we had in Israel leasing car uh, with logo and uh, all the people around us in the global market look at us uh, like crazy it was like for them it's the same but the opposite people locally are used to different things and we must take that into uh, account in the occasion and use and this is my tip use local partners or use the partners that we are working with like agencies and recruiters and the uh, uh, people that leave the market it's exactly the same like we think being in Israel, located here, we just know the market. You don't need really a, a survey to know what is going on because people are coming and telling you maybe more than you want to hear, but anyway, it's the same in the different markets. And actually, my advice is of course to, uh, uh, to be very, very aware of benchmark, meaning surveys, etc. not only salary and the uh, bonuses, but also equity and other benefits like health, etc. And really be tied to the local market using benchmark, both survey that you are paying for, okay, but also relying on local. Uh, Giora, I think that you and I had a long time ago a conversation about uh, compensation in local different markets. And uh, honestly, in this topic, the, uh, the outside partners 
out of the organization can uh, teach you much more than uh, inside. So my advice is to have a, a partner. We are, we are working with people in APAC, in different countries in APAC, in the States, actually there are differences, huge differences, you know that. Um, I know and I'm aware that now a hiring manager are saying, okay, so we are opening a position in different locations because working everywhere, working anywhere, we can hire different locations, we, we can hire the same person. We are agnostic to the location, which is very tricky, and this is a new challenge around budget. But still, when you come to define, look at two things. Of course, the profession, the, uh, the experience, etc. but also take a look at the local market if you really want to be successful with hiring talent. So that's my advice. Uh, I think I think uh, almost every word here is in stone. Uh, the compensation is a, is a, is an issue that needs to be understood, and um, and I think that the main thing that everybody needs to do is to listen carefully to the local competitive benchmark. I I always say that we don't we, none of us in this room or in this session or in this event have invented the local uh, competitive benchmark. It it happens by itself, and if you know how to listen to it. Uh, then you will learn quickly and understand. There's one other term that I think we should all remember in the, on the benchmark side, and this is the cost of making a move. Because a lot of times the benchmark doesn't tell you what the cost of making the move, because if, if the competitive benchmark on the 80th percentile is 200, uh, there's a cost of making the move to what type of company, to what type of event, to what type of, of uh, what the status is. And sometimes the cost changes how we look at the benchmark a bit because a, a talented person will say, okay, I make the high end of the benchmark anyway today, so I want to improve myself by 20%. It can be an equity, it can be an upside in, in base, but we have to we have to put that in the terminology, I think, the cost of making a move. But thank you very much, Sigal. And Donna, let's talk for a moment about, uh, everybody talks about cultural differences, and we understand that we work in a multicultural world and where there's cultural differences all around us. Uh, in the U.S., I like to say there's 50 different little countries um, with cultural differences between them all. But how do the cultural in, in differences impact uh, finding the right people, hiring the right people, managing a process? What, what do you see? What have you been learning and seeing uh, on the cultural aspects and impacts of, of uh, global hiring? Um, so, in all honesty, I mean, when you come from a, an Israeli uh, corporate type of a startup uh, like, like us, um, it's not for every heart. I keep saying it to candidates. You know, it's not. It's not for everybody. Uh, it's not as worse as, as you know as, uh, as as U.S. candidates think sometimes. But uh, but you really have to get adjusted to a certain style, like the differences in style. So I think the the first thing that uh, that we always explain is you know what is uh, what is it like to work for for an Israeli type company. And uh, the, the good, bad, and ugly. So I, I, I always try to really bring up front, like, uh, you know, there are a lot of really great qualities uh, about this place, but, you know, it's high, it's high pace. We don't always have the patience to, you know, for slow processes. Like, I, I try to, it's very general, what, what I'm saying now generalizes things a lot, but I try to give them some type of a perspective on how it would feel like to work for a very, like, a, a, a compare, compared to big companies like a smaller type of a company, uh, an Israeli company. Uh, but then there's also a lot of advantages. So this is kind of partially selling what we provide as, as an Israeli company and partially just intimidating them to the extent that they understand that sometimes the expectations are different than working for companies like you know, HP and Amazon and like the big, the big uh, you know, American corporates. So, uh, so it starts with kind of identifying who is the right fit and who's not, 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 not so much you know, of a great fit for us. Um, and then it continues with us uh, realizing that at the end of the day, if you want to manage a company globally with like a lot of different sites across the globe, you always have to, you know, think globally, act locally. So uh, we think globally, there are a lot of things that, uh, that we share in terms of the hiring process, how we do things. It's very critical for us to always look at the personality and the cultural fit um, just among, you know, the other professional aspects and capabilities. I know that in the US, in some companies, they don't put a lot of emphasis on the personality side. So when I, when I had my first two, you know, recruiters uh, out of out of the US, they they didn't know, in, they did not uh, perform in uh, like a personality interview in the beginning. 
And then we talked about it. We, we kind of decided how the process would look like globally because we all want at the end of the day, you want to make the, the same decisions across the globe. And um, I've equipped them with the right capability to, to, to have that type of personality interviews as well. And now we all do the same type of process in Israel and, and, and abroad. So some things are very identical. They are kind of the same. Other things, we let you know the different sites do their own thing. We have a site in Kiev, for example. They have some type of a questionnaire that they run with, uh, with outside candidates. It's a very long questionnaire. It's, it could take like an, between two hours and three hours to fill, fill out. In Israel, it would never fly. I mean, I don't think that engineers would sit and do it like a questionnaire without even have someone speak to them before they start the process. In Kiev, it's, uh, this is how they do things. So, um, so we try to really figure out how locally, what, what would uh, make sense you know, culturally from, from a global perspective and also try to kind of maintain the, you know, the, the thing that consistently you know, describes how Logs.io want to operate as a global organization. And, and this is how we do things across the board, not just in hiring, think that in, in any, any other aspect of what we do as a company, uh, we really try to incorporate the global thinking. So we, we have a lot of, we do a lot of um, you know, uh, round tables and try to figure out what does the Boston team or the Kiev team or the UK team feel about stuff that we're doing in Israel? What would make sense for them and what not? And I always, I always uh, make uh, an effort to explain that to candidates as well. You know, I, I just, I describe how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis and how we kind of embrace the cultural differences and at the same time, what what is important for us to keep you know consistent across the globe? Yeah, I, I think that uh, that uh, what you mentioned here about uh, thinking global and acting local is is really uh, and accumulates everything and, and puts it in a in a really good perspective. We need to understand that there's a global culture on the one side and that there's a local aspect. Uh, there's a local culture on the other side, and if you understand that and respect the local culture on all the different aspects that we talked about up to now. I think uh, that's one of the most important things. So Miri, as a, as a sort of as an enclosure, what would you say are the preparations needed to get uh, accurate hiring results? What, what do you do to make the, to try to get the results to be really accurate at, uh, at each level? Uh, so I think that there are several steps that uh, you can take before starting the actual search uh, in order to get uh, more accurate uh, results. Uh, sometimes we're rushing into opening a, a position and based on what we are familiar with uh, in the Israeli market, talking about cultural differences, and we need to be uh, more humble and to be open to make the, the relevant uh, adjustment uh, in order to localize the, the search. And it goes uh, really to the points that uh, Dana mentioned as well in terms of, of culture. Uh, one of the things we do is to research and learn more about the local uh, market. You can learn a lot from uh, uh, researching the local job bar boards and, of course, in LinkedIn about the companies that are active in the local market and what they are looking for, uh, similar positions that they are uh, employing. Uh, the salary levels, the seniority of, of this position. You can learn about the profile, the job description, and the, and the right title for the position you are aiming for, because sometimes you're just doing copy paste from what you know, uh, a new title, and sometimes it's even uh, the little things that in the way you describe or title the position that can make uh, the difference uh, and, uh, and uh, be more accurate and more relevant to, to the local uh, search. Um, another way to get prepared is, is to create a, a good network locally. Uh, when we face the challenge of hiring abroad, uh, especially the first new hires on the ground, we, we do collaborate with our business partners and we turn to our uh, advisors, local advisors, uh, to get an overview on the best local market standards uh, and to get uh, the relevant information before we start the network and, and to get some leads uh, uh, as the first step uh, because they know us already uh, in terms of, of the business and, uh, and they also know the local market and can uh, help us uh, uh, bridge the, the gaps. Uh, we recently hired uh, um, in Singapore and we 
uh, use our uh, local uh, network there in order to get to the right uh, person. We did that also in our hires in the US when we just entered there. Uh, so it's very important to um, collaborate with partners who really know the company uh, and its culture, whether they come from the business or side or, or placement agencies that you work with already and understand how you act, what's important for you, what is the DNA of the company, uh, and help you get the, the right uh, and accurate uh, result. Thank you very much. Um, so we see the, the, the challenge of finding the right person uh, for a specific business position or for a specific, a specific position uh, is finding a, a needle in a continent. And I think that uh, uh, this is a great big challenge for everybody involved, for, from the HR people uh, to the hiring managers. And I think that uh, the small tips that we've been uh, sharing here for the last 30 minutes, I think uh, a lot of wisdom was in them. And uh, I want to thank everybody that uh, listened uh, and was part of this uh, session today. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Sigal, Miri, and Dana for your, uh, your tips and wisdom. And uh, I hope we meet again soon. So thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.